Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome to the channel of Equip Institute. Today we're going to answer a really important question and that question is, what does it look like to navigate getting projects accomplished for small teams and what do you put in your productivity system to make that happen. Well, welcome, I am Florence. I am a productivity practitioner, but this is important to me because I've been in the program project management arena for mm, more years than I care to tell you. I'm not gonna tell you that, especially since this week I had a birthday. Yeah, that's all over. And I have been doing personal productivity and understanding what it's like and learning new skills and methods since I was, in middle school. So those two things come together tonight as we navigate, learn about navigating projects as a small team and using productivity principles along the way. I am excited to be here with you all tonight. The official title of the show is Navigating Project Management for Your Productivity System and Your Small Team. But really, it's all about what we want to do, and that is creating value. Creating value means accomplishing something that's important to you that you decide you want to do and something that's going to be benefit for you, your clients, your family, your organization. This is creating something of value. So before we get too far into it, I do want to say hello to some folks who are in the building with us tonight. So let's just get right into it. We got some fabulous folks out there and you guys are in for a treat tonight. I'm going to start at the top. I got to get there. So just saying hello to our community manager, Frank Jackson. Welcome to the show this evening. Thank you for being out there serving and then, of course, the Emotional CEO is here. Thank you also for serving, being one of our moderators and community managers and really someone who keeps me grounded. And yes, welcome to all of the Live Tribe. Even those of you who are in a position right now where you're not able to be in chat, but you're listening in, maybe you're cooking, taking care of children, a loved one, you're driving, but you're listening. So I thank you for being here and giving Equip Institute and this channel some of your Friday evening. And then, of course, I've got my friend here from uh, Tech Troublemaker here. Thank you, Tech, for showing up. And if you have to do your Uber run, I understand. So that's who is here with us so far, but we're going to get right into the information. Tonight, I'm going to cover really two things, but I'm going to go a little bit deep in these two topics. One is the principles of navigation. Managing projects is really, and really leading it, one of the key principles or one of the key laws is the law of navigation. And for me, that has been something that I've tried to learn and apply. And so I'm going to share some of the things that I've learned to do, some of the things that I do. If you are around me, you know that I use these all the time. And then also I want to share some project management tools specifically for small teams. I'm not going to talk, I'll just tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to talk about big, huge project management tools like Primavera, Microsoft Project, um, Plan View, those big enterprise level tools. That's not what we're talking about tonight. So if you're looking for that or you expected it, I want to set your expectations right now. We're going to be talking about things that small teams can use and be successful, tools that small teams can use and be successful in executing their projects. So I'm going to get Uh, the understanding the destination, <laughs> yes, hashtag mute, uh, mute nation, uh, understanding where you want to go, what your destination is, is the first principle because knowing how to use tools 
does you no good if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish, where you're trying to get to. This is true in the physical world. The classic example is if you want to go to New York and you don't know how to get there, you use a map to map out the destination, the stops along the way, the roads you'll take, the turns you'll take, the scenes you may see. You map that out. Well, executing a project with a small team is really very similar. So the first thing is to understand what it is you are trying to achieve. What is your destination? Where, what are the goals you want to reach? Once you know what those things are, you can begin diving into them and putting the plans in place. But until you get this very first step done, you're not going to move anywhere. All the tools in the world won't change it. All the wanting in the world won't change it. It just simply is. The second item on that list, and I'm deciding which way I'm going to use, which tool I'm going to use here for myself, is choosing the appropriate tools. You know where you want to go. You've done a little bit of planning, but you've got to choose the appropriate tools. I didn't say right tools, best tools, a lot of tools. I said the appropriate tools. And appropriate, but I, I mean by that, what is right for your team and your project? What tools do you need for your team, which includes you as the leader, and the project or the goal that you want to reach? Today, I'm going to talk about some software tools. There may be other things that you need. In the world of project management, we talk about what are your resources. We call it labor resources and non-labor resources. Labor is people people's time. Non-labor is everything else. So what tools do you need that are appropriate? Now, how do you figure that out? Well, you got to think about some of the factors that go into making that decision. And I'm going to talk about this from the specific of the size of your team. We're talking small teams. Therefore, something that's going to work for a small, small meaning three people, six people, probably no more than about 12 people. A small team is what we're talking about. What's appropriate? And you consider those individuals who are part of that small team very specifically. Then you consider how complex is the project. And you guys know I like to talk about a specific type of project to make the example come alive. So today I'm going to use a project of preparing a series of live stream topics that I want to cover and, and, and what I need to do with my team to prepare that series of live stream topics. So I'm talking small team, a team of three people. Goal, prepare for a series of topics to give, to present in a, in live streams over a month period of time. So four to five live streams, four to five topics around a theme. That's what I need to do. And then your budget. What is your budget? Is your budget, you need freemium? Is your budget, you've got a lot of money to spend and you don't mind spending it? Everything in between. So those are some of the things the three things to think about first. Then when you begin to think about applications to use, some of the things you want to think about are how easy is it to use? Ease of use and what the interface looks like. What does the screen look like to the person? In technology, we call that the interface, but for many people, does what does the screen look like? Is it attractive to them? How well does that tool work with other things, other software that you may use? We call that integration and an ecosystem. If you're using one tool that doesn't work with anything else you have, that may not be the move to make. Is it available in mobile apps and how accessible is it? Does it work with people who need different accessibility options? Though that's another thing to think about. Again, appropriate for your team size and your project complexity. 
And I talked about budget and that has to do with the pricing and the plans. If you have something that you can't afford to ensure your team has, then you may need to make a different decision. So you're choose you're going to choose the appropriate tools as principle number two. Principle number three is you've chosen the tools. We'll come back to tools later. Then you got to prepare your team to use them. Saying to my team, hey team, we're going to use Evernote and not invest in any time. That's the tool we use in helping the team understand at least the foundation and the basics of using it is absolutely worthless because they won't use it. They won't understand it. They'll be afraid of it. They won't like it. It's not familiar. So whatever thing you pick, you got to prepare your team to use it. That may mean getting them training or conducting the training themselves. It may mean doing demonstrations. It may mean being willing to simply answer their questions. So while you chew on that, I'm going to remind everyone, see if I can do this correct. I've made some changes in my system. But if you have questions, Put a Q colon in front of your questions, and this is a great time to ask questions. Put a Q colon in front of your question, and I will be sure to come back and answer them. And oh, by the way, now's a great time to subscribe to the channel, to like this live stream, to hit the notification bell. Great time to do it. Encourage you to do so right now. So going on in terms of preparing your tool, I really kind of said that choosing those tools, you really just got to think about what tool is suited for your team and what you're trying to accomplish. There are some well-known tools that I want to share with you all that have some things in common, and, and this kind of gets into the appropriateness for your team. I'm going to share four, I think it's four, maybe five, tools that have the following things in common that make them worthwhile to consider for a small team. So these are the capabilities. One, each of the tools has a mobile app. We know, we're aware, the majority of people today do most of their work off of mobile apps, either a phone or a tablet. So the tools need to work in those two devices. They're easy to use because if it's complicated, people are not going to use it unless they're career, they're in a career field that requires them to learn to use complicated software. They have deep integration with other software products. So you've got the tool, the project management tool, but it integrates, for example, with the Google ecosystem, or it integrates with Microsoft Teams, or it integrates with Slack, or it integrates with other types of software that you can get information in and out quickly. Those connections can be important. It's flexible to use. Very easy, but also flexible. It doesn't have a specific point of view, if you will, that you have to follow. It allows you to use your creativity to make it work for you. We talked about mobile apps. Well, then that means the software needs to synchronize the content or the data across these different devices. So if you have an application or software that it works on a mobile app and it works on a computer, but then, and I remember these days, what you put on the mobile phone doesn't show up on the software on the computer or doesn't show up in the software on the web, you might as well not have that capability of using it on multiple devices because your information that you're trying to get to and trying to use and trying to see is not where you need it to be when you need to use it. Offline access. I know 
We think we're connected 100% of the time. We're not. We actually occasionally get to places where we are unplugged. Airplanes, although that's less and less. If you get on a ship and you're in the middle of the ocean, there are ways around it. Sometimes you just decide, I need a break. You go on a camping trip. You go to an area that doesn't have cell towers everywhere. We're not always connected. Or you're traveling internationally, and for one reason or another, you decide, I need to work offline. Well, these tools have the capability of working offline, and then when you come back online, they'll sync up. And they work for individuals, and they work for small teams. So those are the criteria, things that I would suggest that you want to write down and think about as you plan out what or select out the tools that you want to use. The one thing that I didn't mention, but they all have it as well, and now this is so true, they all have some form of artificial intelligence capability. They don't all work exactly the same. The AI works differently for the different tools, but each of them have some type of AI capability that has been released. So if you think about that laundry list, which of those are appropriate for the team that you're going to be working with? I talked about how easy the interface is or is it something that's attractive to the people. And I also talked about being customizable. These tools don't have a point of view, so they're very customizable. You can change them. And for the most part, they have an easy, easy and fast and simple learning curve. There's one exception, although I would submit you can get started using it easily, and the complicated parts come later. So we talked about preparing and training your team on those tools. The next thing you want to do in terms of making sure that the, te the tool is appropriate for your team and considering all those factors is making the tool accessible to your team. By that I mean either you've got the funds to buy the software and make it available to all of the team, or you have a team that will invest in the software themselves. There are multiple ways to do this or you have software that you don't have to pay for. Again, budget is a consideration. So whatever you do, you've got to make the, the tools accessible to the team. Again, if you've got it and your team doesn't have it or you don't have it, what good is it? In the context of me and my team preparing for these monthly shows, we use Evernote. We use shared notebooks. We put documents and graphics and thoughts and lists and all kinds of things in these shared notebooks. Evernote has both paid plans and free plans. They will work. The others all will work very similarly. Next, you've got the tools you've prepared the team, you want to begin to nope, wrong one, see? Prepare and willing to course correct. Being willing to course correct means you've done something up front, and that is you've set expectations with your team. Let them know what you expect and how they will use these tools to complete the project. Also, back to appropriateness and preparing, provide them support. And once you get into the project, once the project is going, something always happens. Something 
always. So go in with the mindset knowing something is going to go off track. Some team member is going to go off track. You're going to go off track. The system is not going to do something that you expect. Even the results you expected to get may turn out to be something different. Don't get flustered. Don't get angry. Don't get frustrated. But go in with the mindset that I'm willing to course correct. That course correction can look like helping a team member understand what's not going right. It could be willing to talk to them and get the team members feedback and their ideas because they're thinking differently than you. Because none of no two of us think exactly alike. It also means you have to have done some kind of regular check-in to make sure you're identifying when there are problems showing up in the project. And then you're flexible because you're not so stuck on doing it my way or getting here at this time that you did not allow for some flexibility. The tool can be flexible, but then as leaders, we have to also be flexible. And then communicate regularly. And finally, along the way, example, when the graphics are created, celebrate the fact that the graphics are created. Say thank you. Get a cup of coffee. Do something with your team member to celebrate. When a team member makes an adjustment on our team, hey, we did this last time in the project, let's do it this way, and the team member makes the adjustment, celebrate the adjustment. Celebrate making those course corrections. Again, if you have a question, please put a cue in front of it. We want to answer your questions. I'm just double checking here because I want to see if there's somebody else who's shown up in the chat today. So that's the short answer. Now, what are these tools that I want to share with you? And there, there are five of them. And you won't be surprised, I don't think. But I want to talk about them in relationship to being project management tools. I've talked about the one that I use with our team, Evernote. And why do I use it? It's easy, it's fast, it checks all the boxes. It's also something that I could train because I was so familiar with it and I could support the team. It has AI, it has file um, ability to have files. It has, you can do task management, task assignment, task completion tracking within it. You can make different templates and checklists within it. So that capability is already there and it's easy to use. It's on a bunch of different devices. Another one, which I've actually used before is Clip, Click Up, which is more of an all-in-one and really all of these could be an all-in-one, an all-in-one workspace, but it, more, it has a more, instead of a note, framework it has a task management framework so it looks for it looks for task and then you kind of build everything else around it you can do notes in there and files in there and um, tracking task in there and track track task de dependencies and track task assignments very similar capability different interface different point of view very flexible because you can, just like the others, you can set it up the way it makes sense for you and your team. You need to either yourself have enough experience and knowledge to do so to support your team, or you need to be willing to ensure your team members get the training and support that they need to be able to use it. The third one I'm going to talk about is Trello, and I have used this one a lot. Trello is more visual. It's for that very visual person. It is 
turned into an all-in-one. It integrates with, similar to Evernote, integrates with just about every other piece of software that exists. It's easy to use. You can make it look the way you want it to make. You can change colors and pictures and all that stuff. You can attach files. You can make notes. Trello in the note area, to me, is the least successful product. I'll say it that way. Because you've got a the card, you just got a big area, a description area, and that's where you put the notes, unless you link it to something like Google Docs or Microsoft Teams, and then you get the note capability. So Trello is another one that's really good for small teams running these types of projects. If I were going to use either ClickUp or Trello, I could train the team on using it and set up the project and navigate them through using it. The next one is Asana. It's another one. It's, Asana is probably one that has been around longer than the others. And it has a combination, it's almost a combination of Trello and ClickUp. It, it started out with the task point of view. It's now got the Kanban point of view built in. It has, ticks all the other boxes as well. So that's another really good tool. I tinkered with Asana. I never really fully used it. So if someone has more experience with Asana, please let me know. I would love to talk with you and maybe bring you on to the show to talk about using it in depth. I can talk about all of the others because I've used them. And the last one, of course, we're going to hit that is on everybody's mind. It's so many people's mind is Notion. Notion is beautiful. It's, it's complete. It is a all in one. You can do nearly everything you can think of. And really, truly, you can do that with all of these. They're very customizable. Notion, however, is more of an architectural. You've got to know how to think through and build like databases and things like that and connect them. So, that's one of the reasons I don't often tell people or work with clients and have them start with Notion because their brains, if they're not accustomed to thinking that way, it it can be overwhelming. But Notion is a fabulous tool. It is absolutely a fabulous tool for managing projects. You can put them, you can see the calendar format, you can see dependencies, you can see assignments, you can track completion, you can put notes together with tasks, and all of it will work as a cohesive system together. So the tools that I recommend is one of these five for small teams that check all the boxes. Evernote, ClickUp, Notion, Trello, and Asana. There are many, 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 many others. There's thousands. But for ease of use, flexibility, mobile app, customizability, those types of decision make decisions you want to make, these are really great tools. One of them will work for nearly any team, small team, that is managing projects. So I'm going to do a quick check and see if anybody has questions. I don't see any questions. If you have not done so, please go ahead and hit that mute button. Hit the mute button uh, here this evening. And so what I want to do is give you an opportunity to start thinking about your win of the week, your productivity win of the week. You know, one of the things I said in navigating with your project team is celebrating successes. So let's celebrate a success you've had this coming week. And while you're doing that, thinking about it, I'm going to talk about one new thing we're going to do today. We're going to play a little game. Mm -hmm. Florence is trying something new, y'all. Pray for me. I'm going to try something new. Hopefully it goes well. I'm sure it will because I have faith. When the Equipping You newsletter 
was launched, one of the things that I shared with the community, those who are members of the newsletter, is that, great, I got a question, I will come back and, and talk about that, uh, is how do you, we want to spotlight or highlight a member of the community in the newsletter. And I've been noodling on, well, how do we figure out who that person is and make it something that the community can participate in and make it something that is fun for the community to participate in and something that makes the selection a bit objective. So think about that because you're going to have something to do here in a minute. I want to say hello to the song lady, and I also want to answer her question. What do you consider a project? And there are just two of us. That's okay. There, there, you know, two, four, 40, it all works. So a project is something that's non-routine that you do. It has a beginning and an end. There's usually something unique in it. There's actually, it's always something that's going to be unique. So let me give you an example. The example that I've been using is preparing the monthly topics for the, for the show. Yes, it's every month, but every month it's a different topic. It's a different look. The preparation has a beginning and an end. The month has a beginning and an end. The things that we do to accomplish that, some of those activities are activities that we use regularly, but then there are some, some other activities that are unique. The graphics are going to be unique every month. The scripts for each show are going to be unique. The Sometimes there's a guest, so that will throw in how do you get a, getting a guest um, booked, prepped, communicated with, and even if I want to, even the promotion can look different. So for me, preparing each month's worth of shows, I treat it as one project so that when the month starts, the month is already planned out, that project is complete, I'm just executing what we've already planned the next month I go on to do something else. So that's an example of a project as opposed to something that's day-to-day -day operations. An example of day-to-day -day operations is I've got to plan my day. I do that every day. It pretty much looks the same way. That's day-to-day -day operations. In your business, in your organization, the projects are the things that are going to move you forward. The day-to-day -day operations are the things that are going to keep, as they say, keep the lights on. So great question. I'm going to come back to this. Yes, it could be, pre be preparing for a new inventory. Um, you've got to figure out who you're going to have do the inventory. You've got to figure out how you're going to label it. All of the things that you do, you've got stuff coming in and absolutely preparing for a new inventory coming in. Even Denise, in your case, I know with Apron Diva, I would say it could be preparing for you launching a new design because that design is unique, right? You've got to draw it. You've got to pick colors. You've got to pick fabric. You've got to pick what you, somebody, whether it's you or someone else on your team, has to make all, a whole bunch of decisions. And each of those decision points, then you've got to plan the promotion for that new design. Right? When are we going to let people know? What are we going to see? Where are we going to put it? Who are we going to tell? Who needs to do what? Who needs to write what copy? Getting the pictures, updating the website. All of that, all of those work streams with you and your team to put out a new apron design. Or, like you said, preparing for a new inventory that you're going to put in. Absolutely, those are projects. Why? Yes, you design new styles, but they're not all the same. 
that's what's different. And once you've designed the style, you've released it, that project is done. Now you may, you're going to take another one and some of the things may be very similar, but they're not going to be exactly the same source and material fabrics and whatnot. If you're doing any kind of fabric textile coloring, you may use a different supplier. All those things are going to be different. Those are absolutely things that you can use and they are absolutely projects. So if you have more questions, if I didn't answer it, please let me know. Uh, you also said, might that work or assign a history committee with a liaison? Absolutely. A history committee? Yes. With four chapters? Yes. That, that whatever you're doing, if you're putting together history of an organization and you've got to pull together a lot of information, again, who has to do what? This is not going to be, you don't pull together history of, a, of an organization every week or every month. It's going to happen maybe once every few years. Well, those few years, each time it's a project because something will have changed. So glad you asked that question. Great questions, Denise. Thank you so much. So while you're thinking about your win of the week, here's what we're going to do. And I want everybody to participate. Oh, not that one. See, I told y'all I was trying something new. I don't want that yet. No, 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 no. Stop. So what we're going to do, I'm going to try to do this a different way. Okay. So the community spotlight, here's what we're going to do. In the chat, for each person who's in the chat, I want you to enter a number from 1 to 10. Every person who's in chat today, enter a number 1 to 10. I'm going to spin that wheel that you saw come up, so I'll bring it back. The first person who enters the number that is closest to what the wheel lands on and does not go over the number that the wheel lands on is going to be our community spotlight for the June newsletter. Again, you can start entering the number 1 to 10. The first person to enter the number that the wheel lands on and the number that they choose does not go, is not higher than the number that was landed on is the winner. And I will be watching and I'm going to look. This is so, it's so much fun. Hey, Conda, welcome to the show tonight. Okay, we got folks, okay, we got folks entering numbers. Everybody enter a number. And while you're entering numbers, I'm going to remind you, also be thinking about what what's your win of the week? What is something that you did? It doesn't have to be huge. It can be a tweak in your system. It could be being consistent in something. But what's your win of the week? I want to celebrate with you and I want to celebrate you and your progress. So are we ready? We're going to try to do this. Florence is trying something new. So this little wheel, I've already entered numbers one through 10 and I am going to spin it. If you have not put your number in chat, please go ahead and put your number in chat. A number between 1 and 10. Just type the number in chat right now. And I'm about to click the button to spin the wheel. And the wheel is going to spin for like three seconds. So it's going to be really fast. And then the number will show up in the middle. Here we go. I'm clicking. It ended on the number 8. So who got closest to the number 8? without going over we do have a winner i thought i saw ah this is our winner our winner is right here conda put in seven that is the closest number unless somebody else can tell me that they put a better number in. They put number eight in. I'm not finding a number eight. All right. Well, everybody in chat, congratulate Conda for being the winner. 
And what you win is spotlight in the Equipping You newsletter. I will be reaching out to you to get a short blurb from you about your business, what you want people to know about you, preferably a picture. And I want to blast that out. Thank you for joining in and congratulations for being tonight's winner. Hopefully you guys will, you found that fun and I see some wins coming in here. So I want to go ahead and pull it up. So Gwen says she made notes in Evernote. Awesome. 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 That is a great, 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 great win of the week to use your tools. And since that was one of the, um, one of the tools for project management. Awesome. Denise says you sent out your first newsletter for April and Diva. Yes, you did. And girl, that thing was on fire. That was, that was on fire. I loved it. I was so excited to get it. So thank you. And you have a question. How often am I sending out my newsletter right now? It is a monthly newsletter. I intended to release it the third week of the month, but because I kept changing my mind, being a little indecisive on how I was going to go about picking the community member spotlight. I'm delaying it for June to next week. It'll get released. And then in July, I'll do the pull earlier in the month so that the newsletter gets out on time. So it'll be right now it's monthly and it's only for those who signed up. If you want to know how to sign up for the newsletter, let me know. I think I communicated that, but if I need to tell somebody, I will. I'm just looking to see if there are any other wins that someone has shared to Okay, so here's a question. Um what's the best way for you to organize? Denise, reach out to me separately cuz that could be a really lengthy discussion. It depends on what you're trying to do. I will most definitely be willing to give you some pointers for your history committee and how to organize your material and where to organize the material. And a team of two people can definitely be a team. Somebody has to lead. Everybody can't follow and everybody can't lead. Um, where do we sign up? The best way to sign up for the newsletter, what I've asked people to do because I'm still working on some back office things is to go to my buy me a coffee page and simply download uh, one of the freebies that are there. And uh, the moderators will put it in chat. Just go there. You'll see there are three or four things on the page. You can just download whichever one resonates with you. For the month of June, I released a resource to help to show how to write a prompt to get ChatGPT to build a time blocking schedule, which was, it took me a little bit of time, like maybe about 30 minutes to put it together and get it to work. So I want to save you that 30 minutes just to use it. So I shared that prompt with you with all of the components that I put in, you can modify it and use it to make a time blocking schedule for yourself. And once you put it in, literally it's a few seconds and it's built your time blocking schedule for you, which was great. So that's the resource. So just pick one of the resources that resonates with you. And um, then I'll add you to the newsletter automatically. Okay. That is really what we've got today. Of course, you all know I like to leave you with action steps that you take away from tonight. The first action step I'm going to suggest you do is test this process that I've outlined with just one project. Don't go whole hog, pick a project and press going test going through the process with it, with you and your team. If it's you by yourself, think through the questions and answer them for yourself. If it's you and a team, work through it for you and your team members, whether it's two of you or 12 of you, 
it works the same way. So step one is to test the process. Step two is before you decide on a tool, you're going to choose a tool to try. You don't have to stay married to it. This is, you know, dated for a minute. But write down for you a list of pros and cons so that you're intentional about the decision you're making and the tool that you're selecting. If notes are really important to you or task assignment is really important to you, know what those things are. And if something, if notes are not important to you, maybe that's a con, if that's the format of it. If task tracking, being able to see when people check things off is important to you, then that's a plus if it has it. And then choose the one that you want to test with and try it. After you've done that, you've tested it and you've run through your project, do an assessment with your team. And this is simple. It's just really asking four simple questions. If you're interested in those questions, I know some people who know me know those four questions. But talk with your team and figure out what worked and do you keep with what you're doing or do you make an adjustment? Do you course correct? Three simple steps, apply them. They will help you deliver your projects with excellence to be able to execute with excellence. I'm going to just just double check and make sure there are no other questions before we get out of here. So of course, I always want to remind you subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed to the channel and you've stuck with us, now's a great time to subscribe. Frankly, we're on a march to get to our first 100 subscribers and we're less than 20 people away. So every subscriber is important. Every person who watches us is important and we want to bring you value. So if we're bringing you value, subscribe. Thank you so much. Yes, Denise, I love that newsletter. It was wonderful. That's really all I got. There's going to be a playlist over here where my finger is pointing that talks about or gives you all of the videos for the month of June. There's one more left in June and we will wrap up the month and July's topic is going to be woo wee. It's going to be some good. I'm even excited about it. So thank you all for being here. See you next week. <laughs>